Hello everyone, welcome to Forensic Science. Here we're looking at Chapter 1 of Criminalistics and Introduction to Forensic Science as part of our Forensics Science course in Chemistry. Uh, some definitions in its broadest definition, Forensic Science is the application of science to criminal and civil laws. The subject matter of this book emphasizes the application of science to those laws that are enforced by police agencies in the criminal justice system. Um, figure one, one, a scene from CIS, a forensic science television show. I uh, not necessarily perfectly representative of what happens, a little bit of embellishment, but people coming together to look over evidence is the main idea. A uh, second definition, forensic science owes its origins to individuals such as Orphila, Bertillon, Galton, Lotz, Goddard, Osborne, and Lockard, who developed the principles and techniques needed to identify and compare physical evidence. As far as a brief introduction to history, Matthew Orphila is known as the father of forensic toxicology, Alfonso Bertillon devised the first scientific system of personal identification in 1879. Bertillon's system of bodily measurements as used for the identification of individuals, essentially finding relationships between different sizes and using those as a characteristic set of parameters for each individual. Francis Galton he had conducted the first definitive study of fingerprints and their classification. Leon Lotz developed a procedure to determine blood type from dried blood stains. Calvin Goddard refined the technique of determining if a particular gun fired a bullet by using a comparison microscope. Albert Osborne developed the fundamental principles of document examination. Walter McCrone advanced the field of microscopy and its application to examining evidence. Hans Gross wrote the first treatise on describing the application of scientific principles in the field of criminal investigation. Lastly, Edmund Lockard incorporated Gross's principles within a workable crime laboratory, and Lockard's exchange principle states that when a person comes in contact with an object or another person, a cross-transfer of materials occurs. Looking at the crime lab scenario, the ever-increasing number of crime laboratories is partly the results of the following occurrences. The Supreme Court's decision in the 1960s, responsible for police placing greater emphasis on securing scientifically evaluated evidence, crime laboratories inundated with drug specimens due to accelerated drug abuse, and the advent of DNA profiling, the ability to find genetic code identifying individuals from what remains at crime scenes. At present, approximately 411 public crime laboratories operate at various levels of government, all the way from the top in federal, down to state, county, and municipal local government as well. Crime scene laboratory units. The technical support provided by crime laboratories can be assigned into five basic services. The physical science unit incorporates the principles of chemistry, physics, and geology, to identify and compare physical science, ev physical evidence. This may include the analysis of drugs, glass, paint, explosives, soil contaminants or metals, and beyond. The biology unit applies the knowledge of biological sciences in order to investigate the biological fluids and touch samples for DNA, as well as compare the hair and fiber samples that remain at a scene. The firearms unit investigates discharged bullets, cartridges, cases, shotgun shells, and ammunition. 
tool mark comparisons may also be made in this unit. The document examination unit provides the skills needed for handwriting analysis and other questioned document issues such as obliterations, erasures, and burnt documents. The photography unit applies specialized photographic techniques for recording and examining physical evidence. Optional services by full service labs. These can be the toxicology unit that examines body fluids and organs for the presence of drugs and poisons. The latent fingerprint unit processes and examines evidence for latent fingerprints. The polygraph unit conducting polygraph lie detector tests. The voice print analysis unit attempts to link a record voice, recorded voice to a particular suspect. Judges were said to be ultimately responsible as the gatekeepers for the admissibility and validity of scientific evidence presented in their courts, as well as all expert testimony. Evidence admissibility, the Daubert criteria. In Daubert, the Supreme Court offered some guidelines as to how a judge can gauge the reliability of scientific evidence. Whether the scientific technique or theory can and has been tested, whether the technique or theory has been subject to peer review and publication, the technique's potential rate of error, the existence and maintenance of standards controlling the technique's operation, whether the scientific theory or method has attracted widespread acceptance within a relevant scientific community. Other landmark cases, Kuhlhoff Tire Company, LT Limited versus Carmichael, determined that the judge acts as a gatekeeper not only for scientific testimony, but any expert testimony. Melendez-Diaz versus Massachusetts, 
determined that an expert witness must appear and determine must appear in person to provide testimony in court so that the defense has an opportunity to cross-examine the witness. Evidence collection training. Many crime laboratories have evidence technicians trained by the crime lab staff on 24-hour call for evidence collection at crime scenes. Training ensures all permanent evidence will be recognized and collected properly where no formal training exists. Familiarity can be gained through lectures, tours of the lab, and evidence collection manuals. Special Forensic Science Services. A number of special forensic science services are available to the law enforcement community to augment the services of the crime laboratory. Forensic psychiatry, odontology, engineering, as well as forensic computer and digital analyses. Forensic psychology or psychiatry is an area in which the relationship between human behavior and legal proceeding, proceedings is examined. Forensic odontology involves using teeth to provide information about the identification of victims when a body is left in an unrecognizable state. Also investigates bite marks though this has become a controversial method of analysis. Forensic engineering is concerned with failure analysis, accident reconstruction, and causes and origins of fires or explosions. Forensic computer and digital analysis involves the identification, collection, preservation, preservation, and examination of digital evidence. In any case, that ends chapter one for forensic science. Peace.